Hi from Alaska, we're on the Aleutian Islands. I'll be showing you what Cole Bay and Adak looks like. Adak with only 25 to 30 people that live on the islands, very remote islands. So watch till the end of the video and I'll be showing you a whole lot more. With Alaska being so close to Canada, you would think, oh, why didn't Canada buy Alaska? That is because in 1867, Canada was still ruled by Great Britain. Therefore, they couldn't make that purchase like the United States did. Charlie caught a female salmon and he is getting the salmon roux out of it. For those that have not tasted salmon roux, it is very fishy, salty, slippery in texture. It's just got a very acquired taste, like not a lot of people like it. I particularly don't, but our guests absolutely love it. And they were Everyone super stoked here. when they saw all the salmon roux coming out of the salmon. And we can rinse that. Salmons runs in different times of the year. For instance, king salmon runs from late May to late July and the pink and sockeye salmon runs from mid-July to mid-August and the silver salmon runs from July to October. We're live in Cold Bay. It's old Captain Charlie. Hi! <laughs> We're up on the salmon stream in the middle of nowhere. We're looking for the elusive brown bear, but we can't find him. Where are you guys? <laughs> Salmon has a very unique and very sad story too behind it. They swim upstream consuming all of their energy because they know they are about to die soon. Here we arrived at Charlie's house. He gave us a wonderful souvenir from Cold Bay. It is Japanese bulls that gets washed up on the beaches there all the way from Japan. So that was really cool to have something all the way from Cold Bay. Thank you Charlie. Our guests have just left. What a wonderful two-week trip we had. We dropped off here in Colbe and on our way to Dutch Harbor. We'll be there for literally just a day, provisioning and fueling. And then we head off to Adak, which is like 36 hours. Super pumped to see Adak. It's only like a few people that live on the island and it's like totally remote. So I can't wait to show you what it looks like there. Our passage to Dutch Harbor was was pretty much like this in this video. No wind, calm seas, absolutely beautiful. On our passage to Dutch Harbor, we saw whales. I just heard the announcement on the radio. All crew, all crew, there are whales outside. Come and have a look. I quickly rushed out to go and have a look. Very awesome to see. mom and told me outside it is so cold it is like 10 degrees i've got like puffer jacket we're like three four layers underneath here but let me show you what it looks like what my view looks like absolutely beautiful flat seas the best feeling is being out on the out on the water so let me show you What do we do when we're underwear and we don't have guests or owners on board? I love to draw coloring in and prepare meals for the crew while underway. Obviously when it's not rough, when it's rough I do meals in advance but you've got to look after your crew, keep them happy and keep them well nourished. We arrived at Dutch Harbor. It is located in Unalaska. It was an 18 hour passage from Cold Bay. Dutch Harbor is 900 miles southwest of Anchorage. The people in Aleutian Islands are called Aleuts. Dutch Harbor is known as the biggest fishing port, ranking in billions of dollars each year. We arrived at Safeway. It was very close and convenient where the boat was docked. We are doing a big stock up here as the general store in Adak only opens on a Monday 5.30 p.m. And with only 25 to 30 people that live there, everything is very limited. Only things pretty much to survive. Um, you can find at the supermarket there in Adak. So therefore we decided to do a big one here in Dutch Harbor. The shipment arrives on a Friday, which happened to be the same day we went provisioning. So that worked out perfectly. Everything was well stocked, um, very good quality. I actually found the whole provisioning in Alaska to be great. Everything was well stocked, um, good quality produce, good quality um, meats. So everything was really good, my time in Alaska. 
I had the pleasure to speak to Sherry, she's a floral manager of Safeway in Dutch Harbour and she told me when the shipment was, where it comes from, all the useful information to know when provisioning in Dutch Harbour. Hi, this is uh, Sherry. Yeah, I'm Sherry, I'm a floral manager though. So welcome to Dutch Harbour. <laughs> so how often does your shipment come in? And we have our shipment every Friday. Every Friday. And where does this shipment come from? From Shuttle. I think, um, I don't know a lot, but I think it's, uh, it's uh, when they try to travel two weeks before it got here. Oh, two weeks. Oh, wow. Yeah, two okay. weeks in, in the ocean before we yeah. get our produce. And then you guys have to wait till, till then. I, yeah, but every week we have our, our uh, shipment though. Oh, that's great. Well, the produce looks... Fabulous. Yeah, but sometimes they're good. <laughs> Sorry? Sometimes they're bad when they come in. Oh my! No, but it's it's wonderful. It's uh -huh. really wonderful quality. Today's our uh, freight day. I'm sorry? Today's our freight day. So oh, freight day. Oh, that's why everything looks so super fresh and, yeah, so and we're very good. We see our our shipment came in today. Oh, okay. Day. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. In Alaska, I found the provisioning good. Most of the supermarkets were fully stocked and has had fresh produce and a good selection of meat. And obviously, I bought fish from the fishermen. <laughs> and even was gifted a bucket of crab as a welcoming gift. I thought that was like so amazing. I found this was the best way cleaning it out on the swim platform on the clean instead of in the galley where everything gets super messy. Provisioning all done, we are ready to leave. Load the taxi up and on our way to the boat. It was a tight squeeze but we managed to find a place everything in the car and we are off and ready to go. Car's pretty jam packed but we found a home for everything and off we go to the boat and then all the fun starts loading up onto the boat and packing everything away. It's always super busy when we have provisions on the boat, it's all hands on deck. The galley always looks haywire but that's normal, that's all part of it, that's the fun of it. And then prepared lunch for the crew and then voila, we've got a clean galley. Discovered a stowaway on board somebody is not going to migrate thousands of miles south and decided to hitch a ride with the humans the stowaway then ran to the master cabin i managed to get hold of it and released it back outside with all his other friends we arrived at adak adak is also known as father island it is near the western end of the lucian islands it is the 25th largest island in the United States. Making meals for the crew while underway, that's something that the crew always look forward to when underway. Adak was discovered by Russian explorers in the 18th century. The temperature of Adak ranges from minus seven to 16 degrees Celsius. The weather is overcast most of the time, strong winds, lots of rain and frequent storms. There is only three children on the island as the school is temporarily closed. Adak Island was once home to 6,000 people when the military was still um, present on the island. However, now there's only 25 to 30 people that live there. Adak Island had 90,000 people in World War II. Hard to imagine with it only being 25 to 30 people at the moment. And then in the 80s it dropped drastically to 10,000 people. Because ADAC is so remote of the location where it is, ADAC's economy relies heavily on transporting fresh and live seafood. Where the boat was docked, there was this ladder to get on and off the boat. And when it was low tide, it was extremely difficult to get off the boat. As you can see in the video, it was quite a struggle, but at the same time, it was quite fun. Go 
We are off the boat going exploring and seeing what ADAC looks like. As we drove, we saw a lot of vacant houses, dilapidated, um, burned down, which was very sad to see, even buildings too. But the island itself was very beautiful, very green and lush, beautiful mountains, and we saw some sea otters along the way, which were very, very adorable to see. This used to be the school on Adak Island, however, there's nothing left of it now. Um, it was quite sad to see. It was quite sad to walk through the school and even see the vacant houses and all the buildings that were destroyed that was once home to 6,000 people, a very happy community. Now it's absolutely like a lost, lost place. On our way to the old McDonald's, it was abandoned in the 1990s when the military left the island. It was very cool to see the prices back then and comparing the prices of today. This was the hospital many years ago, there's no hospital as of today, only an Ada Community Health Center and this is managed by the Eastern Aleutian Tribes. There is no doctors on the island, it is staffed by physician assistants at times. The health center provides family medicine, chronic care and urgent care services. If you need major work done, urgent work done, um, you won't be able to do it on Adak Island. The EAT, which stands for Eastern Aleutian Tribes, they send a dentist to the island one week per year to get dental work done for the residents. So it's really remote and quite extreme. Adak Island is 1,192 miles from Anchorage and from the mainland Alaska it is 1,200 miles so it's quite far from the mainland Alaska so it's very remote and it is 2,437 miles from Japan and 2,845 miles from Russia.